Welcome tonight, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful, spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. What is the temperature outside here? It is a roasting 70 degrees, although I don't think there's any way it's 70 degrees. Yeah, but it is Monday. Monday, June 13th, 2022, and uh, so at the end of a long, hard day, I was wondering what I was going to talk about is the chronicle of the collapse of a planet, and I did not have to go very hard. I turned on the mainstream media, New York Times, the number one story on the planet, according to Yahoo News. Wow. Russia's oil revenue soars despite sanctions, study finds. Can you believe it that Russia's oil revenues are soaring despite sanctions? Uh, anyway, guys, before I get into this article, and I'm going to put the link to this long involved piece. I'm not sure I'm going to get all the way through it. Uh, I just want to... Uh, Let's see, I got to tread fairly carefully here about the whole, that whole little kerfuffle going on over there in Ukraine. I'm sure, as a lot of you have pointed out uh, publicly and privately, that I don't talk very much about what's going on over there in, in Ukraine. Uh, and I really like the... The response that if you heard my interview with Jeremy Jimenez yesterday, my buddy Jeremy Jimenez yesterday, unfortunately it was after the interview. I did not weigh in on the whole Ukraine thing. It was after the interview uh, that my buddy realized, 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 asked Jeremy, uh, as the three of us were talking after the interview and the camera was off. Uh, so Rob asked Jeremy what, what his opinion of that whole thing was. And I'm paraphrasing here, but I loved Jeremy's answer and I wish that the, uh, that the camera had been running. So Jeremy, if you want to clarify in a comment how close I got to your answer, which I agreed with, 100 percent and but I'll just tell you my opinion and, and I think it's what Jeremy was saying and that is uh, you know I'm, I'm not over in Ukraine okay uh, I'm not there uh, I am not a political scientist I am not a military strategist <clears throat> All I know with my limited uh, studying of this that there's people that I respect on all sides of the issue that seem to be making a good point. I think what Jeremy was saying, and I agree, is, is that this whole thing with uh, Ukraine and particularly with the media buzz and the social media buzz all around it, that what it does is, th this, this is probably the best example that I can think of, where what you do is, <clears throat> you have your preconceived notions of what's going on over there, okay? And there's so many people out there, from uh, Caitlin Johnstone uh, on the left, which I would say probably my buddy Rob is aligning with Caitlin, uh, all the way over to uh, whoever, you know, the usual suspects on the right. Uh, that what you can do, you take your preconceived notions of what is going on over there on the other side of the world, and you go on YouTube, Facebook, uh, wherever, and you will find plenty of people, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, 
to agree with you. Uh, it is, is, is that confirmation bias or not? I can't remember. Is that, is that what they call that term, confirmation bias? <clears throat> Just finding somebody, you already know what you think about it, so you spend all of your time uh, listening to people who agree with you uh, about what's going on over there. You, have, you do not pay any attention to anybody else because they're obviously, if they disagree with you, you're a clu they're, they're a clueless moron. And so why should I listen to a clueless moron when I could be listening to people who agree with everything I already thought? And that is what I think is going on with the Ukraine war. So I'm not, what, what is, who cares what my opinion is? My guess is that the truth is somewhere between uh, the mainstream media and Caitlin Johnstone. Uh, okay, it's somewhere in the middle. One thing that I learned in five years of uh, <clears throat> journalism school and seven years as a professional uh, reporter and news editor is that the truth is somewhere in the middle. So this is why I'm not getting into the politics, but this story here, uh, you know, from a collapsitarian point of view, uh, it doesn't matter, okay? It does not matter what your opinion is on the politics of it whether it's the U.S. Empire's fault, whether it's Vladimir Putin's fault, whether it's Santa Claus's fault, uh, it's everybody's fault, okay? This story has nothing to do with whose fault it is. We can all talk till we're blue in the face about whose fault it is, what this story to me, as a collapsitarian chronicling the collapse of a planet, is that this is, if, if, if you need any more proof that this planet is not going to voluntarily wean itself off of fossil fuels, but the, the fact that Russia's oil revenue is soaring uh, in the year 2022, despite sanctions or not, uh, the fact that anybody's oil revenues are soaring in, in the year 2022, okay? Russia, the, the U.S., anybody else, the fact that, that we are still, uh, we're, we're a bunch of fossil fuel slaves, I sure as hell. Uh, I am a slave to the fossil fuel industry. You're, you're damn straight. Uh, if I ran out of gas in my gas-sucking truck, and uh, the, only, the only gallon of gas I, I could find, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin was sitting there holding a, holding a tank, a, holding a, a can of gas on the side of the road, I'd, 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 uh, I'd give him $20 a gallon. I'd put it right in his hand, okay? Th this story, whatever you think about whose fault the, the war in Ukraine is, is irrelevant. The end result is we are all a bunch of pathetic uh, fossil fuel slaves. We are not going to voluntarily stop burning fossil fuels. It is not going to happen uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of this, and you can take the link from there. Uh, anyway, take it away. New York Times. Wow! Russia's invasion of Ukraine triggered global condemnation and tough sanctions aimed at denting Moscow's war chest. Yet... Russia's revenues from fossil fuels, by far its biggest export, soared to records in the first 100 days of its war on Ukraine, 
driven by a windfall from oil sales amid surging prices, a new analysis shows. Uh huh. Russia earned what is very likely a record 93 billion euros. It would be real nice if the New York Times, for God's sake, uh, would tell you what that means uh, in, in dollars. It, 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 it's the goddamn New York Times, and, and they're quoting prices. Okay, it's pretty much the same. Uh, one euro is a buck four, so 93 billion euros. Uh, I don't know, call it a hundred, uh, a hundred billion dollars, uh, which is pretty much one billion dollars per day. Russia earned what is very likely a record 93 billion euros, otherwise known as as one billion dollars every day in revenue from exports of oil, gas, and coal in the first 100 days of the country's invasion of Ukraine, according to data analyzed by the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air, <clears throat> a research organization based in Helsinki, about two-thirds of those earnings, which they're calling the equivalent of about $97 billion. So now, uh, so two thirds, if 97 billion is two thirds uh, of, you know, the New York Times is making me work too hard here. That sounds like 140, 150 billion dollars came from oil and most of the remainder from natural gas, although there are some coal sales uh, showing up here too. Uh, this is Laurie Milverta, an analyst who led the center's research. Quote, the current rate of revenue, meaning fossil fuel revenue, is unprecedented because prices are unprecedented and because export volumes are close to their highest levels on record. Yes, fossil fuel exports have been a key enabler of Russia's military buildup. In 2021, Revenue from oil and gas alone made up 45% of Russia's federal budget, according to the International Energy Agency. The revenue from Russia's fossil fuel exports, you know, just its fossil fuel exports, not counting any other exports, exceeds what the country is spending on its war in Ukraine, the research center estimated a sobering finding as momentum shifts in Russia's favor as it, for, as it forces focus on important regional targets amid a weapon shortage among Ukrainian soldiers. <clears throat> Ukrainian officials again called on countries and firms to halt their trade with Russia completely. This is Oleg Ustensko an economic advisor to President Zelensky, quote, blah, 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 blah. All right. <clears throat> uh, I do like this quote. After the blah, 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 well, you can stop importing Russian caviar and Russian vodka, and that's good, but definitely not enough. You need to stop importing Russian oil. Yes. Uh, research found Russia's export price. I'm, I'm skipping ahead through, uh, through some of this. 
research found Russia's export prices for fossil fuels have been on an average around 60% higher than last year, even accounting for the fact that Russian oil is fetching about 30% below international market prices. So, uh, you know, so it is cutting in, but, it, you know, you take a, well, it, you know, that makes sense. Even with a 30% discount rate, uh, countries are still paying 60% more than they were a year ago. Good God, that, that you know, guys, the world has gone crazy. Um... Europe, particularly, has struggled to wean itself from Russian energy, even as many countries send military aid to Ukraine. The European Union made the most progress on reducing its, port, its imports of natural gas from Russia, buying 23% less. Hmm in the first 100 days of the invasion than the same period last year. Yes. Even so, income at Gazprom, Russia's state-owned gas giant, remained about twice as high as the year before, thanks to higher natural gas prices. Yes. Uh, okay. The EU did reduce its imports on Russian crude oil, which declined 18% in May. But that dip was made up by India and, strangely enough, the United Arab Emirates, leading to no net change in Russia's oil export volumes. India has become a significant importer of Russian crude oil, buying 18% of the country's exports um, over the 100-day period. And as I mentioned this in an earlier video uh, a week or so ago, the United States has made a dent in Russia's earnings banning all Russian fossil fuel imports. Yeah, right. Still, the United States is importing refined oil products from countries like India and, interestingly, the Netherlands and that most likely contain Russian crude, a loophole for oil from Russia to make its way to the U.S. And, and, and again, guys, I am just going out on a limb with no confirmed evidence. This is just a hunch that, that you, you better damn well believe that uh, Russian crude is coming to the U.S. Uh, there, there's... Uh, you know, how many ways are there to wash a dish? 263 ways. I anybody who thinks that Russian crude uh, it, it is not getting in, in, in into the U.S. Uh, yeah, right. But the New York Times is not going to go that far. But certainly products made from uh, Russian oil... We're, we're buying all of that crap. But of course, overall, China, China was the single largest importer of Russian fossil fuels over the 100-day period, edging out Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. So Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands are still directly importing Russian oil as Vladimir Putin laughs all the way to the bank. China imported the most oil. I guess who the top purchaser of Russian coal was 
That would be Japan. Uh, stricter bands are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love this one. Europe is also speeding up its transition away from fossil fuels altogether. Yes. A new EU target aims to increase the region's share of electricity from renewable forms of energy to 63% by 2030. Uh, now, as... Uh, my friend Jeremy Jimenez touched on in our conversation yesterday, whenever you read this about, whenever you read this, New York Times, anywhere else, uh, about the, these BS renewable energies making up whatever, uh, let's, let's call it 50%. Uh, when the entire pie is growing, all right, when the entire energy pie gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year, even if renewables are making up a larger share of a bigger pie, that you still have no reduction in the amount of fossil fuels going into the pie. I, this, is, this is a real difficult concept to explain uh, to people. Uh, this is one of the bright green lies uh, going on out there about this crap uh, about renewable energy making up a larger percentage. Yeah. But it, if, if it just means the larger percentage of a bigger pie, who cares? And without even getting it into all the bright green lies of all, all of this crap anyway. Um, anyway, so, all right, we have Janet Yellen. All right, Janet Yellen is going to put Vladimir Putin in his place. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said last week that Washington was in talks with our European allies about forming a cartel that would set a cap on the price of Russian oil roughly equal to the price of production. Uh, I have I have no idea what that means. I I, I mean I'm, I'm sure India and China uh, are going to be joining that cartel, the, the two biggest buyers of Russian oil. Uh, you better believe they're grabbing up that cheap oil. Uh, so the question is, all right, if if buying Russian oil at a 30% discount suddenly dropped the price of a gallon of gas 30% from $5 a gallon to what is 30% of $5, a buck 50, we'll call it. If, if the United States said, okay, you have a choice. We can, uh, you know, do all these sanctions, or we can buy this Russian oil at 30% off, and a gallon of gas will cost you $3.50 instead of $5. What percentage of Americans would jump at that deal? Jump at it. If your guess is 99.9%, of Americans, if they could save 30% off a gallon of gas, and all of their concern for Ukraine uh, would go right directly out the window. Anyway, it is getting dark out here, and uh, all right, people out having fun on this beautiful evening. 
highly suggest you get out there and have yourself some fun while you still can. Bye, guys. <clears throat>